feels very much like a whole different world. What defines cosplay? I didn't really know much from it at all. These people look so cool. This is gonna be something I want to do, I guess. Getting dressed up and going and having fun, regardless if it's at your own home or at an event. It's a, such a commitment. Cosplay has emerged as a new hobby that's become a mainstay between nerds of popular culture online. Like most, I know little about what it actually means to be a part of the cosplay community, so I figured the best way to learn about it would be to talk to those who knew their stuff. To start with, I didn't really know much from it at all, I can't lie. Like, I've seen stuff on like TikTok and just like social media and stuff like that. A lot of the stuff is quite... Um, I don't know, it seems you quite... have to be part of it to know it. Yeah, it feels very... It, not exclusory, because they're not explicitly saying, oh, you shouldn't do it or whatever, but like, it f feels very much like a whole different world. Yeah, like, you, think, need, you need your ticket into yeah. it. Yeah. And, like, coming into this documentary itself, like, I found it very strange when I was meeting with people and stuff like that, because for me, it's, it's such a huge step from my reality in this, like, of what I do, because I don't really watch anime, I don't really, like into a lot of the stuff that is to do with Comic-Con and cosplay and stuff like that. Coming into it, I think a lot of the research that I did was very interesting to learn it more from like a personal perspective because obviously there's not much you can learn from social media and seeing it from like a far distance. And if I really was going to go and like do this documentary, probably go into things in a certain way, I'd have to speak to certain people. To understand the experiences that members of the community have, I spoke to cosplayers Eddie and Hannah, who gave me insight into the actual con experience, whilst also showing me their cosplay inventories. Um, so what does like a Comic Con day consist of? A mess. Yeah, oh. a mess. An okay. early start. Yeah. How early? How, how early are we talking? Um, it depends on what where time. you are. Yeah, because some it depends on what time the con starts. If the con starts at nine. If you're at a hotel that's like ten minute or ten minutes away, right? Yeah. Then you need to get up probably about six. Yeah, six to seven ish. Oh, oh that's it. If you're ten minutes away. Yeah, a lot of people at cons they can sometimes be very weird. So oh, not really? to like. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Oh, okay. So um, when I went in November, we were there for three days. Okay. And we met this one person on the Saturday, and was it? We was it? yeah Saturday because I was Kazwa. Oh no. Uh, they were Scaramouche, and. What's their relation? I have no Genshin. idea. Genshin. Genshin relation. So people ship the two characters together. Oh, okay. Like they think they're romantically involved. Oh, okay. Um, and this person was very weird towards me just from the get go. Right. And then we shared Instagrams because that's what you do. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cons. Um, and then after that, they was asking me to come stay with them like straight away, like immediately. Oh. And it got very, very weird very quickly. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It's, it's just like a very hit and miss thing with cons. You either make very, like, like they are either really nice people or they're just weird yeah. as. Would you say it's, um, there's like a disproportionate amount of people you cross boundaries in the cosplay community either? Or would you say that it's fairly similar to most community, most subcultures in um, general? There's a lot of consent issues with cosplay. Yeah, I think that mean. people just feel like they're in like entitled, you know? Yeah. Like just because you're in a costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After being able to talk with Hannah and Eddie, I was able to get a wider understanding of some of the problems that cosplayers face. Sadly, a lot of these issues surround consent, and we found that some of them arose for members of our group before and even while recording the documentary. When I was did my first cosplay as Harley Quinn, thankfully it didn't ruin the experience, but I was kissed by some middle-aged man I'd never met before, never spoken to before. Yeah. Yeah, I was kissed by him, and That's all. You know, thankfully it didn't put me off the experience. But it was so you don't think you have to say, "Hey, don't yeah. kiss me." Yeah, it shouldn't be a thing you have to say. Yeah. When we were recording, though, we were wrapping it up. I was saying my final thoughts, and I was saying that I found the consent thing really strange, and like I found it weird that other people just come up to you and just touch you, and someone came up to me and touched me. Yeah. <laughs> Not like. Not indecently, but they came up to me. So putting the arm around you, some yeah, people don't like it. I, I didn't. I don't personally like to be touched by strangers in any sort of way. Yeah. And so, to a random guy to come up to me dressed as the Terminator, which is scary as it is. <laughs> like even if he was dressed normally, it would be really like scary. Yeah. But it was like some big man shouting in like a German accent about. He was going all into he it. He was. He was. And I, he I, 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 I respect the commitment, <laughs> yeah. but. 
I don't need to be touched by it. I think something interesting to point out as well, sort of similar to what you were saying about, like, because you're a man, you won't be sexualized. Yeah. If you're someone's favorite character, suddenly your consent, you as a person, and your age are, like, not relevant. Yeah. Like, again, sort of, like, when I was with Harley Quinn, an anime character, you know, like, something that's got, like, a questionable fan base anyway yeah you know people are going to come up to you and be like oh my gosh you're my waifu you're that's all like oh i love you so much forget like, you're not actually the character yeah yeah you there was that big separation that some people luckily i haven't had that experience much but yeah some people just don't that is awful yeah cosplay influencers play a big part of the exposure of the hobby I spoke to Jasper, a known creator within the community, about her dance routines and impressive customised costumes. I was first getting into, because I remember getting like a lot of dirty looks and a lot of stares, and now oh, when yeah. I mention, oh, I cosplay, like, it's like a general recognised term now that people understand what that is compared to like to before where I would get like, kind of side eyes and kind mm. of like, oh, um, why would you do that kind of situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When I go to a convention, my goal is, I, I always set a goal of to compliment at least one person every single day. Nice. Uh, and let them know that I really love their costume. Uh, get a photo of at least one person every day, because I struggle with that. So that's always a goal, is just like, I want to get photos of other people, because everybody's costumes are so great. Uh, uh, and then uh, also being able to try to make a friend during that experience as well. What do you want the rest of the world to know about cosplaying that you don't think people already know? I think that it is a very common thing that people believe just because they're not skilled enough, that they're not skinny enough, they're not pretty enough, that they can't cosplay. And I feel that that is a very, like, it's it's something that I wish that everybody could get over and enjoy because, you know, cosplay is for everybody at the end of the day. Rather, you are using cardboard or thermal plastic. Like, you know, everybody's going to sit down and enjoy your costume just as much. And people will notice the effort that you put on it. And I do think that... At least once in your life, everybody should cosplay at least once, just to give it a try, just to, you know, experience the con experience in general, just because it's it's meant a lot to me growing up, and it has helped me out a lot, and I feel like it could be really nice for other people to have that experience and, you know, grow with it. Coming away from this experience, my view of the subculture has slightly changed. The free self-expression and supportive community really help the individuals embrace a part of them that they wouldn't do otherwise. As an outsider, this is something nice to see. Despite there being issues surrounding consent and boundaries, I thought that although the negative stereotype is exaggerated, there is some reality to it. However, everyone I have spoken to has not had that changed their experiences and has welcomed me the whole way.